As I've explained to you before, we don't do heading ones, twos, and threes like you would in Word or FrameMaker or some of the hats, right? We have a title inside a section and Polygo automatically applies the irrelevant hierarchy depending where it's in the topic or where it is in the publication. What we want to do now is to show you how to add subsections, which is really going to be, in other words, the next heading level in the hierarchy. So I'll just put some text in. I'll be honest, the reason why I add text, it doesn't really help you know, to show you how to use sections in the other trainings we're doing. I'm just a technical writer for 30 years and I just can't put another heading right after another heading that has to be text in between. Those of you who are tech writers can understand where I'm coming from. Pains me, so that's why I do it this way. So that one, level below. So if I want to put another heading level, what I do is bring up my elements with the Alt Enter and I want to add another section. So if we have a title again, inside a section or a section, look the same as this, as there's a paragraph directly in the section. Now I've got a new section with a new title and we'll give it a title. I've called it second level heading. And I can put in here whatever I want, just like in a regular section, the beginning of a topic. So maybe I'll get rid of this text. I will put a bullet in. Point one and point two. Simple, again, as you go to the structure, power inside that first bullet of that whole bulleted list of this second section inside the whole topic or the whole section. Let's have a little quick look in the preview to see what it looks like. So preview and HTML5. So you can see in here, we have this level, the top level, and the second one, you can see by the font, they're different. I want to go into the HTML so you can actually see. If you're not familiar with HTML, it doesn't matter so much. It's just really for, to just to point something out to you. So I'm going to inspect. And if we will look here, this is an H2. If I inspect on the next level, it's an H3. So Polygos, as I said previously, it assigns the appropriate heading level to you according to where it is. And something else, just for interest, you can see on the right-hand side, a dynamic table of contents has been created because I have multiple sections inside this topic. When we get to the publishing recording and training, and we talk about layouts, it's a simple option to turn on. It's in the TOC section of the HTML5 layout editor. Very simple to do, press a button, and it'll always appear for you. So if we look at this second level heading, this, this section that we made, and let me ask you a question. Is it standalone or is it reusable in another topic at the moment? What do you think? You're absolutely right, it's standalone and it's not reusable. But we can make it reusable very simply. We can click on the section, not on the title, on the section, and it has an option to convert to reusable component. This allows me essentially to make it into another topic and it'll appear in the content manager on the left. I can choose the folder of where I want to put it. So I want to leave it where it is. And do I want to reuse it in the same place or that will just remove it from the topic altogether. So I want to remove it and I'll click OK. Watch what happens. So second level heading now appears here on the left hand side in the content manager and it's been reused here. It's essentially like going insert component, which we'll see during the reuse training. But I'll just, I'll just do that for you quickly. A, a quick preview of how inserting components work. Insert component and I'll just put in about this company in here. And that's how an inserted component looks like. So essentially that's what second level heading has become. We've taken it from a standalone section inside a topic to being reusable. So now it could be reused in multiple places. Something else that might be of interest. What happens if I want to do a section inside a section? So let's create another section here. And we'll call it first of a nest. And now I want to put a section inside this section. Now, obviously you wouldn't go too far because it makes a pretty poor user experience. I was asked even yesterday, you know, what's the limit? Can you put five nested sections in? I'm not aware of a limit, but I did say, I don't think your customers and the readers are going to like that so much. But again, it could be a legitimate use case. But if I want to put a section inside of a section, which is a normal case, you don't get as long as you're going too far. So I've gone to the end of that section 
and just put another section in. Like that. As you can see, it's a section inside a section inside a section. If I do a quick preview, we'll see what it looks like. As you can see on the right hand side, which is even maybe even more visible, you can see that nested has become an indent and here it's a smaller font. So just so you can see those things and you can play with them yourselves. You would have seen by now a couple of ways to manage your hierarchies in Polygo. There's also more to it with chunking, etc. But we can put a hierarchy inside a topic itself and we have a hierarchy inside a publication. When we go into the reuse training, we'll go into that in more detail and other types of hierarchies and even discuss you know, which one to use and where. Just wanted to make you aware of different ways of doing hierarchies. Please go ahead, try to follow what I've done in this recording and make some subsections yourselves and see how they preview. Enjoy playing with headings. Before we go and create a new admonition, let's see what type of admonitions we have. So if I go to any folder and I go to create content, if you remember, these are admonitions down here. Danger, warning, caution, notice, note, important tip. There's even some custom elements that you can use if they help you there. Nevertheless, for admonitions. When and how you use them is up to you. Just be consistent. Maybe follow industry practices. Warning tends to be something of physical danger, caution, just be really careful. But it's up to you to work out how you want to use them. Just be consistent. That is probably the most important thing. So each of your authors knows when to each one. I'm sure you have some sort of style guide or playbook of how to write for your company. This should be part of it. Let's create one directly from here first. So I'm going to go to a note and I'll click on open an editor. Oh, typical me to forget something. Polygo told me I forgot the actual name to put here. So let's do it. I've called it an example note for training and click OK. You see Polygo has created a note for me in the pubs. I actually want to move it. So let's move it into topics. And we hear it's a title inside a note with the text. So I'll put some text in. And I'll create a preview so you can see. And for a second, know what the title is. Because I'm going to preview without it in a second. So let's preview again to HTML5 with the same thing for PDF. You can see this note has the title in. Now, you would just modify the CSS if you want to change the icon. For a PDF, in the layout editor, you can upload your own icons. And now let's see what happens when I remove the title. And I'll preview. By default, as you can see, Polygo added the title note. So if you want the default in here, you can put no title in. If you want to have your own title, put this in. If you want to remove it completely, in the PDF layout editor, as far as I'm aware, you can't do such a thing. In the CSS for HTML, very quickly, just go to detail for a second, you'll see that it's called an HTML class title. You would go to the element style and put display as none, and then it's disappeared for you. If you so want to do such a thing, that's advanced, just a little tip for you, should you like it. Let's close the preview. So we've created a note. Let's go and add that note into another topic. So I'll save. And for example, I want to put it in here. So I'd go insert component, a kind of example of reuse. And we'll go into our structure, our hierarchy, and I'll put the note in. And there's our note being used inside the bullet. And I'll save. Now let's create a, a new admonition directly inside a topic. So I'll go to adding users. I'll go after the table. And I've got three ways to put an admonition directly inside a topic or any component. Insert menu, click on the icon. I can add from here, or I can put a shortcut in. 
Or I could bring up my elements again, put a warning, and if you want, you can click this so it becomes one of your favorites. It'll always appear. Like if I go here now, you'll see warning top of the list is one of my favorites. And I can put some text in here. Don't touch live cables. So similar question I've asked before, is this reusable? You all shout, no, it's not. But because I've asked the question, obviously it can become reusable. How can I make it reusable? I can go to warning, convert to reusable component, give it a name, for example, cables, and I want to leave it in here and I'll click okay. So now as you can see, that has become another admonition in my list on the left so I can reuse it and I've reused it here. If we go now into the cables admonition, the warning, there you go, you see, it's a warning with the content inside of it. And this by default didn't have a title as I entered it inside the topic itself. So you now should understand how to add admonitions within existing content and how to create admonitions from outside of a topic, create their own particular component and insert them into other components as well. I don't know if I should say enjoy admonitions, but please play with them.